Hey y'all, so we're back for another session in our Rolodex. But a few things I want to talk about here before we get started. I had some mail came that come in and I'm excited because it has to do with today's, um, what I'm going to show today in our Rolodex. And I started not to go to the mailbox and some, before I turn the video on, I thought, let me just go out and check to see if it came yesterday. And in fact, it did. So I'm so excited about that. So we'll do that. Um, before we get started though, I wanted to address the sound anom anomalies that's happening in the video. I really appreciate you guys sharing that with me. Um, I don't take it lightly. Um, so I have worked to resolve it. Hopefully it is now resolved in this video. So let's keep our fingers crossed. Um, one of the things that happens here behind the scenes that I know a lot of you who are not creating videos, you have no idea that any of this goes on. And I certainly didn't until I started making videos. I've been on YouTube, what, maybe about five years now. And things have changed quite a bit. The biggest thing that has changed is that so many of the technology platforms interface with Google Chrome. Um, I happen to like Firefox. I'm a Mac user and Mac and Firefox really get along very well because Mac has very stringent firewall protections. But um, a lot of the platforms we have to, you know, kind of go through Google Chrome. Now, Google Chrome updates, I swear, it, weekly. <laughs> it's like just about every week they update. And they are outpacing a lot of the platforms that provide um background information, I mean, background applications or apps to those of us who are creating. And that's just across the board. That's even with my studio school, with Patreon, everything. It's just amazing. And so these um, applications or these app providers are having a hard time keeping up with Google, so or Google Chrome. So um, there's a lot of anomalies that happen. When YouTube got rid of Google Hangouts, which is what I used to use. I used to use Google Hangouts, which was a YouTube product. And then I could tape my videos and they would push right up into YouTube and it was seamless because it was on the same platform. Well, YouTube, I think, wanted to not have to store so many videos and what, what have you. So they got rid of that and said that we had to kind of get our own external platform. OBS is the one that most creators are using and that was recommended. Now with OBS, not only do you have to set up a lot of behind scenes, just imagine yourself in a studio at a radio station or something, and you got that big board in front of you, you got to push this, pull that, you know, stop this and all that. It's like a lot of behind the scenes functionalities that you have to set up. And I did that. Um, and so I thought everything was fine because I'm on a Mac, my Mac suppresses sound. It's just a function of my operating system. So when I play the videos back, I can't hear anything. So when I hear it, it all looks great. I push it out not to hear it again until you or I'll say something. So when I went and, and listened to it, I in fact could hear the cracking that's going on. And you're right. It is in several of the videos since within this last five weeks when we all had to sh switch over to OBS back in um, August. So it was something called a noise gate and noise suppression. I share this with anyone else who's listening to my video because I know a lot of creators listen to my videos. And if you haven't been using OBS, a lot of people don't even want to get on OBS. They're just sticking with, they're just doing a, a more complex taping, doing internal editing and then putting it up. It's the noise gate and the noise suppression that I had to go in. I did some research this week based upon what you guys were telling me because I don't take it lightly because I want you all to enjoy this experience as well. And I went and I changed those features. And a lot of people said, when you go in and do that, that helps um, when the video goes out because my Mac is basically doing it automatically. And I didn't know that. So apologies. Hopefully this is fixed. If not, we're going to keep on working on this till we get it right. <laughs> But I did want to say that, so know that it is something I'm, and I did put the note on the video. So um, for those of you who are longtime jelly printers and understand the process, I understand it could be annoying. I come to people's videos sometimes and a lot of stuff goes on and sometimes I have to mute the sound or, you know, whatever, or the audio or the, the video quality isn't good, but I can listen to them. So I try to give people a pass and I really, really thank you. Those of you who are giving me a pass because it's a lot, um, that goes on and we're constantly having to buy new technology, spend money on new platforms, get new cameras, get new, because the, 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 um, 
the creators of Google and YouTube and all these and Facebook are constantly updating and we constantly have to keep up with them. So it's not an easy process, but thank you. Thank you so much. So I wanted to take the first few minutes just to share that with you guys. Okay. Now let's move on into our project. Well, the good news is that, <clears throat> and I, before I started the video also, I looked for your name. I'm so sorry. I can't remember who gave me the suggestion to get my, um, my um, Jelly Dex punch from scrapbook.com. And I know um, we had talked about this a few months back, <clears throat> but they were out of them. And so you reached out to me, I think it was last week. I cannot find that comment though. So you know who you are, You're, you know you comment all the time. You've been supporting me for a long time. Thank you, thank you so much. And I would love to acknowledge you by name. So you just let me know in the, about, below this video because I love you guys and I appreciate you helping me as well. So I got my Heidi Swap um, hole punch and when I after I ordered, I thought, oh my God, I hope the hole punches are in the right place. So yay, they are good, good, good. Because I have some cards that are larger and they are not, the holes are not placed like these. So I don't know if the newer systems have placed the holes all in the same place. I haven't gone down that rabbit hole to figure it out yet, but we will be using this today in the technique that I wanted to show you. So that's good news. Thank you. Thank you for that one. And they still do have them in um, stock at the scrapbook.com. I think it was like $17.95 for it. They have them on sale. I think they're regularly like 26 or something. So I didn't think that was a bad price to really be able to have the ease and not having to worry about our... <clears throat> Um, I'm just looking at the back of this, are um, getting these holes done. So we're going to do that. The other thing that came in the mail is this book that I ordered. And I was going to share this with you guys because over in Patreon, one of the things that we do over there, and I think I got this off of Amazon, but I think this might have come from the Goodwill. Yeah, so that's a Goodwill sticker on it. So Goodwill sells books through um Amazon, which I think is a good thing. I think I only paid $3 for this book, $3.98 or something. But I love Sabrina Ward Harrison. I already have a number of her other books here. This is one, Spilling Open. I have another one, Brave on the Rocks. She has a number of them, but I didn't have this one, Messy. What's this one? Messy Life, A Messy Thrilling Life. And one of the things that we're doing over on in my Patreon is that we're studying book, book as art and how so many artists contributed to that conversation back in the late 80s, early 90s, moving forward <clears throat> to now. And especially in those years when it was first starting. So a lot of the thing of junk junk um, journaling and a lot of the journaling and stuff that you see on YouTube that a lot of wonderful creators are doing, it really came out of a very early tradition of people like Sabrina Ward Harrison, who really took beautiful imagery, um, working in their journals, and I haven't looked at this one yet, and really com combined um, photos with writing, with, you know, um, what's this, masking tape, you know, the sort of grunge, she really was the queen of, uh, or is still, because she's still um, in her studio working. She was the, uh, the queen of junk journaling <laughs> with the tape and writing and the grunge look of it all. Um, you can still find her on, on um, she's Sabrina Ward Harrison. Uh, here's her, what's her name right here? Sabrina Ward Harrison. You can find, dot com. She has a wonderful podcast called, I was just listening to this morning on my walk. I like listening, listen to podcasts when I'm walking. It's, um, I think it's something like hanging in the trees or in the trees or something like that. But when you go to her website, you'll also see the podcast, but it's all just talking about art. Um, we also been looking at the work of a buddy of mine. This book came out in the nineties, Charles Hobson, same, the same type of, you know, collaging sort of sort of the idea of the junk art. But today, so we, we work on things like this over in Patreon. I introduce a lot of those kind of concepts and we talk and have conversations about them. And so one of the things that we do a lot of this in is what I call a jelly junk adori. So over there, we are just working through all the pages and different techniques that I'm sharing on 
um, using jelly printing, photo collage, um, fo you know, and various different techniques to create, you know, pockets and fold outs and what have you. So one of the things I'm going to share with you guys today is we were working on these postcards. So these are postcards that we, we're making to be sort of elements in our journal. And back here I have an extra one. Oh, I wanted to show you guys this. You know how we always get these um, offers in the mail from, I think Discover is doing them. You get so many of these, but the envelopes are so great and they're glass seam. So I've started collecting them and we can easily collage and jelly collage all over that. I got this one in the mail today, this green one. Ooh. So I'm going to stick this in my journal, but I, I wanted to share that with you guys. So you're probably throwing these away like I had been until I thought, wait a minute, those are good envelopes to keep for our junk journals because they're already just so snazzy. So anyway, I wanted to show you guys that. I told you I had a lot to share today. Okay, so I'm going to move that out the way. So that's our, that's over in Patreon. It's $10 a month, and there are eight videos a month that I put up just doing a lot of the jelly journaling techniques. I also do other book art techniques, like we've been working on something called a palm book, which is just about, we're just about done with, just finishing putting a storyline in it. And this is a little vintage pouch, because I collect these. And the little book just works so beautifully in this pouch. And so we're, we've made this, we've sewn it, we've done all of this sort of um, borrow stitching on the covers. And then these are all our jelly prints and what have you in there, um, along with mark making and what have you. And we're just putting the text and the language in there now. So we did this over there. So we do. I'm doing a lot of book arts over there in the journey of a book artist. Okay. So today we're going to work with this postcard, and we're going to work with one of my a jelly print that I've already had, you know, in my collection. And this is out of the tradition of Lenore Tani. Um, this one book, you can get it on Amazon. It's, I'll put the links below, but it's on her postcard collages. And she literally did all these postcard collages and she sent them to people. They were addressed, they went through the mail, and it's just art. And she was an incredible collage artist and very, very well known worldwide. Um, but love, love, love this book of collages. So we're working with creating our own collage postcards that this is one of the ones I did. And the whole card, even this is a photocopy of an image that I printed using my HP printer on photo paper. So though it's glossy and it looks like it's the card, it's not at all. The back of it is a photocopy of a card that I, postcard I recently got in France. So I photocopied the card and then used it on this cardstock to then create the collage. So now what I want to show today is how you can pull your jelly prints and other collages. You can take pictures of them, run them through your printer or take them to the library, whatever, run them through the printer. And then we're going to actually make collage. We're going to make some um, cards for our Rolodex out of art we already have, which is also wonderful. So you don't always have to just jelly print on your cards. You can go back in and use art that you already love and um, and then glue it, you know, and we'll put them on the cards. So this one, I'll show you the first one. So this one I photocopied. So literally I took a picture of it on my phone, sent it to my print printer, enlarged it to nine, I think not, um, no, not nine, um, seven and a half, and it automatically made, I think, 10, 10 point something, so that it would be the larger, the size of the um, paper. So I printed it out, and then I took this and printed it on some, um, let's see, graph paper. So I just took graph paper that I coffee stained get this yumminess right and then I took this and ran this through the printer to take a photocopy you know I took this and laid this on the printer bed and bed and put this in so it ran through so that I got this right here look how gorgeous that is where you get all the lines I just love it because 
it's changed the print from this to something else. You know, using photocopier art, you guys who've been following me for a while know that I'm really big on reviving the idea of using our photocopiers as a part of the art process. So using the coffee stain paper and, um, and then using this gridded paper, I got a really lovely pattern. Now, a lot of times I'm asked about the archi archival nature of the coffee. And, you know, I've answered that a number of times, and this is where I fall down on it. If you think about the art of like Marshall Duchamp's, um, Picasso, a lot of them, back in the era where they were going into um, collage art was, you know, was big. It was um, using repurposing materials, you know, et cetera. They were using paper bags, all kind of stuff. And that art is still in the museum 100 years later, beautifully preserved. So if our art gets to the level that we're that notable, museums have <laughs> archival departments that keep things going. Honestly, that's the truth, because I used to work at the Library of Congress in the rare book room, and I can't tell you how many things I had to work on keeping preserved. So it's no problem, really honestly. But using really good papers help with that. Um, using papers that are sized. So when you're using printing papers like Art, Art on Reeves or BFK and whatever, those papers are actually sized. So they will break down a lot slower over the process of time because the the bit of the acidity that's in the coffee is not going to um, damage it. So let me make an example. If every time you clean your brushes, let's say when you're watercoloring or painting or anything, if every time you clean your brushes, if you're not cleaning it in a distilled water, if you're using something from your sink and putting in your paint, the, about the same amount of destruction from the fluoridated water, et cetera, is still going to have an effect on the longevity of your art, just like this coffee will. So don't sweat it too much. But if you really still are like, Robin, I'm not buying that, I, I don't know, <clears throat> then what you can do is you can take a a copy of your photocopy. If you like this whole grunge look, but you don't want the real coffee on there, then take a photocopy of it and run that photocopy through your printer. And now it's all printed grunge. It's not coffee on there. And then use, and you can do this on good paper, like on a good quality, um, uh, like I use the resume, resume paper like Crane or um, South Fork that's 25% or 100% cotton. Um, so if you print it on a paper like that, then you're good to go because you're using good quality paper, good inks, and um, you're now just taking a picture of the photocopy. So, you know, there's a few ways to approach it. So don't not do it. Just figure out what works for your own aesthetic, for your own sensibilities around um, that topic, okay? So we're going to use this today on our cards. So we're going to be using this one. And then the other one we're going to use is this one. So I, I have tons of these folios that just have all of my, this is just some of these. I like holding on to these sheets, but it has a lot of my jelly prints in them, you know, just ones that are in various stages or things that I'll come back to and maybe use in my books, use in, um, <clears throat> like this one here. <laughs> but anyway, so I went through this today. I mean, I just have, you know, pages and I have like, uh, okay, I'm looking up on my bookshelf. I have, uh, I don't know, I have like maybe 30 of these folios full of stuff you can imagine. So I went through and pulled out one from this series right here. Where is it? Um, here it is. So from this series, I pulled out this this one here, and I laid it on the on the copier, and then I photocopied it on to paper on that same graph paper that was coffee stained. Okay. So now I have this image on here, so you can do the same thing with your jelly prints. And you can do it on plain paper. Of course, I like the grunge. It's gonna work well with my my jelly decks, but you could literally just photocopy this right onto any color paper or any kind of background. And then we're gonna take and use these 
as a part of our our rolodex or jelly decks series so you know you can go back to prints and things that you already have that you love and let's just reuse some of those right so we're going to literally take these and um what i'm going to do is i don't really want these to be super duper wet so I think what I'm going to do is just do a really good job of using my, no, you know what? I'm going to use a tacky glue. Let's just use tacky glue. So we're just literally going to, once you photocopy your, um, your images, whichever ones you want to use. And like I said, if you don't have a photocopier, don't worry because you can you know just go to your library I think the library is the cheapest place because you can photocopy for what I know mine is like 10 cents or something like that it's pretty inexpensive but I mean Kinko's truthfully is not that bad I think they're 13 cents or something like that so it's not bad just take your stuff there you can even send it to them you know you send it to them and then they um, will print it and you can just go pick it up I oftentimes before I got the copier that I have now, I would just send um, oops, I would just send it to my local Kinko's, which wasn't that far from me. And um, so we're just gonna put this down. Let's get these down. <clears throat> so we're gonna get one side of these going. And of course we can do both sides like this, but I think what I'm gonna do I'm not sure yet, but I think what I might do is just preserve this back side, maybe for some other kind of jelly printing on it. I might, we might do both sides, who knows, eventually. So, but let's just get this down. But yeah, I used to send it to Kinko's, FedEx Kinko's, and, um, and then I would just go pick them up with, with instructions. Like, okay, just print these in color or do this or do that. And they were always so cool. In fact, I just need to go visit them because I don't even see them as much as I used to because I used to always be in there photocopying something. Um, okay, so. So you can see why I'm, I'm so glad that that punch came in so that I can punch all these. Okay, so what I'm going to do is just take the back side of this and just really press this down. I'm going to put it to the side and let it dry. If it turns out that some of the ends don't get it completely, it's no problem because, you know, we can throw a little glue underneath there, but the majority of it is gotten so let's do the same thing for this one I love I love I love I'm gonna turn it this way since it's going um, landscape so that I can make sure the cards kind of go on that direction the image is not going upside down so just pay attention to that when you're working yeah this is cool so yeah so just all you know and I, I want to show you a lot of different techniques because I do a lot of these. I mean, I'm doing a little bit of everything in my studio when it comes to working in my book structures, you know. And so I, you know, I see this jelly dex as a book structure, like any other. So it's like all the different ways that you want to approach putting your imagery in. And I'm a big believer in, you know, using my jelly. Friends. And some of them I like to preserve because, you know, I'm going to maybe use those in final pieces of collage art or, you know, my, um, those projects. But at the same time, make sure that I, oh, okay. Um, but at the same time, you know, I want to, you know, I don't want to use the, the original and cut it up yet. And sometimes I just use my um, ones that I really like as, as references for, you know, other work that I'm going to be doing. I'm just looking underneath here so I can get it at the right spot. 
So So doing this way, I don't get as many because um, of how I'm laying this out, but it's okay. I don't think there's enough room to put one inside. Is there? Oh, wait a minute. I can get it in that space. Perfect. Well, these will go the other way, but it'll be cool. Okay, so... It's taken... I always, I'm always trying to watch the glue thing. Ah, it's okay though. <clears throat> Let me find another piece of wax paper so I can really get this down. I'm a big believer in change your paper and change your, you know, when you're gluing so that you don't get glue in just the wrong places. Okay, so we'll let this dry. Ah, oh, that's going to be good. Let that dry. And, okay, time, we're looking good. So let's go ahead and let's cut some of these out and see what they look like. Turn it this way. So you can get a lot of cards done like this because now this will be the base for, you know, doing more collaging on it. You could even come back and glaze them with, um, since they're photocopied, if you want a little, um, I'll show you, we'll do one. You know how I like to just glaze and in a glazing, I put the thinnest coat of acrylic possible. See, I can hear my machine starting to run now because um, I think one of you guys suggested that it was um, the fan or the motor or the battery or something like that. It, it definitely is because after I'm using it for a while. Um, but hopefully noise gate takes care of that so we don't hear it. It suppresses it. Like right now when I'm not talking, I'm looking at my sound meter. <laughs> it's going all the way down to zero. So when it goes, it, what I'm told is that when it goes all the way down, when I stop talking, like I just did, as long as it goes all the way down to zero, which is doing, it shouldn't be picking up any of that other sound. Let's hope. Because if not, I'm going to have to come up with a different application. I won't be able to use um, OBS. And I can actually use... Um, an editing program, Premiere, Premiere, but I'm telling you, I have so much that I'm already doing on my other platforms and stuff. You have to edit videos. It's like, uh, I don't think I'd ever get a video done if I had to edit it, honestly. So, we shall see. So, I, so I cut these out, and you can, I mean, I'm not going to sit here and cut them all out because you can imagine this one's still drying, but where, where we're going with this. So that's looking good. So look at these cards. Look how we just got some yummy, grungy cards from old um, prints, but using this, this um, so you can put it on any paper. You can put it on graph paper, you can put it on line paper. You can use just about any paper that has a background print to it. And let's open this up. Probably gonna make a lot of noise right here trying to get this thing open. Okay, here we are, yay. Look at this, <laughs> I'm so excited. So it's nice because it's got these little guides on either side, perfect. Let's see what we get, yay, look at that. Just, oh, it actually made it a little bigger than mine, but I don't think that's gonna be a problem. Let's see. Yep, it's perfect. Yay. It's perfect. Perfect, perfect. See? It, it holds in there. Okay, perfect. So, let me show you a quick glazing technique that you can do with this. I'll just get my small plate here. 
and do this real quick. And using just about anything, um, <clears throat> move this out the way because it's still got, let me just wipe it off for goodness sakes. I don't want it to, that glue is still on this card, put that away. Okay, one of the ones that I really love <clears throat> is the Martha Stewart Champagne Gold. This is lovely because it's very light. <clears throat> and what this is going to do, it's just going to give a nice little consistency. So if you want the cards to sort of still have, we're doing this technique where we're using our other jelly print plates, but let's say we really still wanted to have that, you know, painted look, or we want to have just a little film or a little coat color on it. Just put it in there. Let's see. Okay. And then just literally just put a very thin, I mean, I have the thinnest layer of glaze on here that you can imagine. I mean, you can see how little just came off I don't know, on, of the paper. It's just a little bit. You don't want it a whole lot. Okay. So you see how you just get a little bit of let me get it. See, you get a little bit of sheen there now as compared to, let's see if the camera will focus. You can see the difference there. So it just gives this painted, you know, look to your cards without, you know, it being full on. And it really does give it a nice texture as well. So you can use that Martha Stewart one or the other one I like is, where is it? No, it's right here. Okay, the Deco Arts Champagne Gold. But it's this Champagne Gold is more of a platinum gold, where the Martha Stewart is more of a yellow gold. This one is definitely more liquidy. It's one of my favorites for glazing, but you just want to shake it up good and just put a little bit down because you don't really want it to get real... Um, you don't really want it to get very wet with this glazing. We just want it to be a thin, yummy layer. Same thing, put that down. Let me just use a piece of paper. I'll use my scrap um, aligning paper that when I put new ink cartridges in. So that at least you can see how thin the color is against a white. I mean, you see how little bit of color is here? So, and then here we have it, it's gorgeous. It's just gorgeous. And so that's how you can use your, um, just go through the day, go through some of the jelly plate prints that you already have or some that you just love and you just refuse to cut them up or use them in anything, right? But you really wanna, you really would like to use these things, you know? Um, so, Trying to get this right here. Let's see what we're doing. I'm learning how to use this. So. Perfect. Okay. Yay! So I'm so happy that we have this now. Um, so yeah, just go through some that you already have, photocopy them, and maybe you already have some some jelly prints that you're like, I'm good with putting those onto my cards. I'm happy with that. I don't have to photocopy them. Let's say you don't have a photocopier or you're good with not photocopying them. Then just do what I just did. Lay them out. Um, lay your cards out on some, um, let's cut this one since we're hanging out. I want to see this one with the, the stamp. Uh, this one's going to be nice too. So we'll cut this one out. Um, so, you know, you can sit down this afternoon where you're hanging out with the family, glue some of these up. And, um, and of course, if you don't have the, um, this hole punch, you know, you can just go in with your scissors and fussy cut those little holes in. You know, we're still, that's what I would, that's what I've been doing when I've been collaging and stuff prior to 
getting this little baby. So that's what this one is looking like. Let's see. Turn it over. Yeah, look at that. Oh, what a great card to work on and continue to collage and stuff. So let's go ahead and just do another. You know, once I start, it's like nearly impossible to stop. But I'm going to use this one because this one against the black that's there, like the black, will actually show up. It's going to show up a little more. Um, it's going to give a little bit more oomph to that area. So, what did I just do with my, oh, here it is. <laughs> so here we have it. So this is good. We got a lot in on this video. I hope and pray that everything went well with the sound. Oh boy, I tell you. Oh yeah, look at that. Can you see the difference now? You see how that just put a nice little bit of glow onto this? See that? Oh. But yet you can just still see the image nicely. And it just made this black area pop just a little teeny bit of, um, of paint. That's all it takes. We get to put these in here. And, uh, yep, look at that. So these are going to be fabulous. Oh, I love this. Golly. I could do a whole jelly decks with my, um, just my old jelly prints. <laughs> anyway, so there we have it. I'm going to keep working here. I'm going to let you guys go ahead and get started for the day. Thank you all for all your comments and all the love that you show me here on this channel. I think it's just a great community of, of um, creatives. And um, I'm glad that you guys look forward to Saturday mornings as much as I do. So I really do look forward to coming and doing these videos in real time, like I, I do them and then I put them up Saturday morning. So this is kind of my routine, unless I'm out of town or something like that and I have to do it a little earlier, like next week I'll be in Mexico. So I'll need to get that video done prior to going to Mexico, won't I? Um, so anyway, um, yeah. So thanks a lot for your comments. Continue to do that. Uh, let me know what you're, you know, what's going on. Oh, I also want to let you know that, um, that Susie Shapiro, who is one of our community that hangs out a creative in our community here, she has a eBay shop and I'm going to put the listing below this video for her eBay shop, but she has a couple of Rolodexes that she's selling for a really good price. Um, and she has other ephemera and vintage papers and stuff in there. So she reached out to me about the Roly the jelly Rolodexes and I said, Hey, I'll just link your shop. Um, because I love promoting all of us. If any of you are in the community are doing anything, you have Etsy shops or eBay shops or something that you're doing that you like to share with the community, let's support each other. You know, um, we support the Michaels and the Joannes enough. Let's support each other. And I like going to shops and shopping with people that I know or that producing materials that, um, that, you know, are things that I like or like to share with others. So let's definitely support one another. If any of you reach out to me to let me know what you're doing, I'm happy to post links below my videos to share this with others in the community. I mean, that's at least all we, the, the best we can do. And if any of you have gallery shows um, or anything like that that are going up in your community, let me know and I'll put a link below the video so people who live in your area that like to come see what you're doing can connect with you because that's what we do in communities like this. We support one another. So I'll put Susie's um, eBay shop link below, but it's Dots Pocket. Cute name, right? Dots Pocket is the name of the shop. And she does have some Rolodexes over there for those of you who have been having a hard time finding them. And, um, and she has other ephemera as well. So thanks a lot, Susie, for supporting me. And let's just jump over and support her and her and her endeavors as well. Love you guys. Take care. And until next week, happy creating and, you know, enjoy the work that we're doing in our um, jelly dexes. Take care. And also remember to go over on Pinterest and join um, the Pinterest boards there. We have a jelly dex 
um, Rolodex board and we have Jelly Printing Lovers and the links are below this video. So jump on in if you want to join me on Patreon. The link is below the video as well. And we're over there doing a lot of other things more in depth um, with the book arts and the jelly printing and all that good stuff. All right, guys, take care. Love you all. And until next week, take care.